Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast, the original K-State sports show. Now let's go to the rolling Flint Hills, home of the Cats and Dogs studio. Here's your host, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the Power Cat Podcast. Fitz, Zach, and Gills back at our stations ready to do this thing. I'm hoping we have some dog action behind Zach today. They're currently laying behind me, uh, but that couch is pretty yummy to them. How you doing, Zach? Doing good. That's a new intro. I know. I, I finally did the new logo on it. It's fancy with the guitar and the cymbal. That's the same music, Zach. It's different, though. A different bed, do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely different. I promise. Oh, it's the old music. No? I don't know if it's old. Uh, I don't know. It's Anyhow. different. Okay. And I like it. Okay, good. Gills, how you doing there in your luxurious Aggieville studio? I'm doing good with my luxurious with, microphone. New mic. Everyone, he has a new mic. The boss finally spent a buck on him. Well, I spent a buck, but not much more than that on a mic that <laughs> And you got what you paid for, yeah. Yeah. If anyone needs a really mediocre, oversized mic uh, meant for gaming, not this, uh, let me know. You can have this one. Is it still here or did you take it? I don't know. I don't know where it's at, but you can have it. Uh, we're sponsored by The Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Make sure you stop into The Fridge every time you're in town. Please tell them you heard about The Fridge on the Power Cat podcast, even if that's a lie. Lie to them. Say you heard here first, even though you've been going there many times. That's that's where I'm at with this. Just lie to everyone. Let's get rolling with your questions from Wabash Station. Once again, uh, Everyone gets to watch or listen to this podcast. Only our VIP, our subscribers at Go Cat, get to ask the questions. And oh, yeah, we have started new recruiting podcasts that are VIP only. Uh, there's some things we talk about in recruiting and we keep it behind our paywall um, for reasons. And we hope our subscribers enjoy that. If you would like to join the party at Go Power Cat, we're currently 60% off a subscription for GoPowerCat.com across 24-7 Sports Network with the opening of the transfer portal. We are on sale uh, to celebrate, hopefully, K-State not losing anyone of substance. Jonathan Banks went in today. Javon. Javon. John, who's Jonathan Banks? Is this someone? Yeah, I mean, it sounds familiar enough. This is the way I am now. All names are mushed together in a mushed brain. Uh, yeah, he went in the portal uh, this morning as we record this on Wednesday. There was a Jonathan Banks at Mississippi State, which is funny because Javon Banks did go to Mississippi State, but that is the only Jonathan Banks I have acquired. Okay. I am losing my mind, which isn't a great loss. Let's get on with your questions from Wildfire Station. Zach, take it away. From Contra Cat, can we get a Fitz health update? And from old school, when will life of Fitz return? A Fitz you what to- update? A health update. Oh, a health. I they want. Health. They want to hear about you. Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm. I'm not. I'm not dead yet. My, one of my favorite lines from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, I'm not dead yet. Um, I'm doing fine. Uh, I got uh, the news about Greg Sharp really rocked me. I mean, that's that's a long time friend of mine. Uh, and if you've missed that, he, he's been diagnosed stage four pancreatic cancer. That really. Uh, those things hit me harder than anything going on with my own health, to be real honest. Uh, I was supposed, to, my original diagnosis was uh, six years to live. That was uh, six years ago. Uh, I'm I'm still here, as I mentioned. And uh, we're going to celebrate in Las Vegas this summer with some fraternity brothers and their wives. Two of the fraternity brothers uh, don't have their prostate either because three of us in the same age group all had advanced prostate cancer in our early 50s. Sounds like a commercial. Were you in the Pike House in the early 1980s? <laughs> Call us the law firm of. <laughs> oh man, I I don't well, know. It, it it got you know what? We might find a link uh, between excessive drinking and prostate cancer at some point because we all fit that. Anyhow, there'll be ten of us in Vegas and and two prostates. But I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I, sleep a lot and uh, I pee a lot and sometimes at times I don't want to do either one but that's that's the way we roll nowadays appreciate that what was the other oh life of fits uh, probably around May I haven't really thought about it to be honest I need a little recouping time to, to be blunt I 
I barely made it through basketball season. I was really struggling by the end uh, with my energy levels. And, and it's not like mental lack of focus energy. I can do my daily deliveries every day, but the brain's there. It's just the body is just all worn out. Well, the brain's not fully there, but um, now body's worn out. But I'll get to Life of Fits. I'm kind of wrestling with if we want to do it in this format on video or stick with the phone only. Um, let me know in, in the comments or on Wabash. Uh, what you think if the life of Fitz podcast belongs with visuals or not i talked to all kinds of people on that we just have conversations and it might change the conversation if we're actually looking at each other they may not like me you can talk about how ugly Fitz is yes that could be a big topic could be next oh are you nope. still going nope 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 okay. I'm done. next questions from go youper cat please recap Portal Chaos Tuesday, and you put that in quotations and capitalized it. Uh, and can you share any insights you have on any pending movements? Well, K State seems pretty unfazed at this point. There was minimal chaos, if yes, any and, at all. And honestly, I'd I'd ask, and they felt good about everything. They they knew that some people would. I mean, let's be honest, Banks isn't surprising. He wants to play defensive end. He tried to do it in the spring. You know what he found out. Uh, he was buried on the defensive end depth chart because there's so many good young defensive ends. So this doesn't surprise me, uh, but he was going to play some no tackle. So I think that will be addressed. I just saw TCU's all Big 12 sophomore defensive tackle nose guard went into the portal. Um, that's a blow for the Frogs. But, you know, the, the thing you also got to keep in mind is there's only so much money in an NIL budget. And so it's almost acting like a salary cap on who you can and can't afford. That's crazy what we've come to. But the other side of that is because of the NIL, Kansas State, whether it's basketball, football, volleyball, anything, now can maybe get some players that they weren't going to get because uh, they can afford it. They can kind of target their money. So we'll see what develops. It was quiet. And I think Tuesday was more quiet than we expected, but also – institutions have 48 hours to put names in the portal. So there might've been some holding back to try to, you know, you basically have a 48 hour cooling off period where the institution can choose to try to entice you to stay or just, they put it off to put them yeah. all in at once. So we'll see it. It's been fairly quiet, but I mean, it's Max Marsh and Javon Banks, right? Yeah. That's I all I know about. Any, yeah. As we sit here today, that's all I know. Right. About. Not so, Ryan Gilbert. Damn it. I mean, Max Marsh was completely unsurprising to me because I think by that last practice, it seemed like he was the fourth quarterback that was was there. And I mean, what we could see looked legit too. Yeah, I mean, I, he'll have to play at a lower level, no doubt. If he wants to play quarterback, I yeah. think he can play safety or you know whatever he wants a lot may, of places. You know, but I think he probably wants to be a quarterback. Yeah, the, the fact that he didn't switch back after yeah. the bowl game tells me he wants to give it a crack. And he I saw this as an opportunity maybe to be the backup here. It didn't pan out, so now he's going to move on to somewhere else. I hope he finds some place where he can play. That'd be really a cool story. I just think it's crazy the number of quarterbacks K State has recruited from the state of Colorado in the last five seasons. It's been pretty good for K State. Pretty well. It's been a good source. Not necessarily. Uh, nah, they, they may not necessarily make the field. Let's hope but this, the one currently does pan out. That one from Colorado. Yes. yes but only after the one from Kansas pans out. Very much so. Yeah. Heels anything? I agree. You look good, though. You're good. You look good, good though. I always look good. All right. We'll get you involved here with some basketball questions. Okay. From came to elevate, there were three Big 12 basketball coaches that were courted in the last week to take other jobs. What makes Big 12 coaches attractive targets for other schools? Heels. Well, they can, they can win. They can prove they can win in the hardest conference in America, right? Now, obviously, the NCAA tournament results this year maybe don't back that up, but I think there's so much respect for for just everything that goes on in the Big 12 beyond you know the coaches. You got the fans, support, all that stuff. NIL. Um, it's just it's so much. There's so much respect for it, and so if you prove that you can do something in the Big 12, you know I think that that's more than enough proof to to say that you can go do something somewhere else. Plus, I I'll be honest here. I I think. All three coaches in question here were courted um, by schools that could pay more than the Big 12 institution could. And I think Jerome Tang with Arkansas was 
probably the lowest of the threshold. It wasn't a substantial race. Scott Drew turned down a lot of money to stay at home in Baylor, and you know it, you, you feel good. Kentucky got one of their own, so uh, I'm not uh, uh, that just I mean, that's yeah. the only reason that took place. I really believe. I think BYU could have paid Mark Pope to stay, but also Kentucky's his alma mater. And I feel like BYU is like, we can find anybody who wants to be here. I'm not familiar you know, with the guy so. they hired, but to hire a top NBA assistant. Yeah. I mean, and, and BYU's got the money to keep people. Right. So, you know, it's, it's unsurprising to me that other schools from other conferences are interested in coaches from the Big 12. You know, like you mentioned, Jerome Tang had a little lower threshold of trying to beat K-State in a money race, so to speak. Um, but it worked out in the long run for the Wildcats, and you know, everybody seems happy and everything's cooled off finally yeah. from the SMU job opening up. That was just weird. Incredible. It's interesting, so though. Like Mark Pope, I guess, from our understanding, Kentucky is that dream job for him, Yeah, obviously. But I know Drum Tang didn't play college basketball, but it doesn't seem like Baylor's his dream job. I know fan support. He, he just loves it here in Manhattan. It almost feels like even if, you know, I know we had this talk last week and on the Waba, on the discussion boards on here, right? Would Drum Tang go to Baylor? Who knows? But it's not like 100% locked. Like just because that's his former school where he won a national title, does not mean he's going straight back that that's not necessarily his dream job. Yeah, but I think Drew staying really stabilizes yeah. a, you know, a couple of coaches, both Tech and K-State. They they're not going to have that lingering around. Um and I think that's really important. Yeah, I think this was good for the Big 12 and let's be honest, the only reason Mark Pope was in that is because he's a former player and, you know, a known player. I I want to compliment Kentucky Athletics. You remember when K-State hired Chris Kleiman, and there was a lot of pushback about hiring Gene's friend, about hiring a guy from D2, even though it was FCS, not D2. Uh, a lot of pushback on hiring that dude. But K-State did a marvelous job of marketing uh, Chris Kleiman once he was hired, letting fans get to know him, showing his arrival, doing fun stuff, uh, and fans warmed to him quickly. Now, they already knew Mark Pope at Kentucky, but – this was not a popular hire with a lot of people at Kentucky because they see themselves as only hiring the very best of the best. And Mark Pope didn't have a particularly great year at BYU. Uh, you know, they made it to the tournament, but they lost the first round. But then they started marketing him, you know, to the things that would connect with Kentucky, like spelling out the cats and wearing the old uniform. I thought they did a marvelous job. And they packed rup arena for his announcement so what, it looked if there was any discontent with the hire it's gone. show people that arena and it everybody looked pretty happy <laughs> inside there so so they did congratulations a great job. to them they did a yeah. great job because they were headed for what k-state had on their hands with the bruce weber hire a, a group of fans who weren't on board let their thoughts be known outside of the press conference it wasn't real good luck for k-state uh but Honestly, some people just never quite warmed to Bruce Weber uh, because it got off to a bad start. They did a great job with Pope. They really did. Which college basketball pundit do you think the Kentucky fans would have wanted as their head coach? That is a Doug Gottlieb reference. Oh, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Doug Gottlieb tried to get the job. I, I think they <laughs> really wanted Coach Rupp back. Just, you know, weekend at Bernie's his ass, set him on the bench. Maybe gone by now but um yeah just let someone uh, i don't know i'm just talking now next question is from itame bb give us your way too early grade for jerome tang's strategy and activities in the transfer portal so far skills strategy mm -hmm. and activities i don't know i mean those are like you can do all you want to try to get a guy you can bring a guy to come visit and go after guys as much as you want, <clears throat> excuse me. But at the end of the day, it is on those players to, to make that decision. Right. So I think getting Doug McDaniel and, and CJ Jones is fine for where case that is right now. Obviously you need to start hitting these bigs and get some center, some forwards onto your roster, but to evaluate what they've got gotten out of it from now, I think certainly it could have been better, but I would anticipate Doug McDaniel having a good chance to start. And I think CJ Jones brings some good things to the table as well. So 
obviously it could be it could be a lot better, guys. What's what's not sugarcoat? I mean, it could be a lot better, but at the same time, could be a lot worse as well. You know, I, I know last was that two off seasons ago when Drum Tank first took over, right? And it took him forever to get a single person. We're all like, what the what the heck's going on here? And so it could be a lot worse. And I get that you need to bring in some some bigs, but I think the strategy has been fine. They're going after these big name guys. Omar Ballo uh, committed to Indiana and got a bag for for NIL. But K-State still, you know, tentatively had a visit lined up with him. Right. So, I mean, they're going after the best of the best and you're not going to get every single one of those guys. But so in terms of strategy, by all means, they've they've been they've been fine there. They maybe just haven't closed some of those deals. But I mean, at the end of the day. You're not going to close every single deal. You can't get everybody you want. So I think they've done fine. It could have been better, could be worse. So here we are. There's no point in dwelling, I guess, now at this point. At, at April 18th is the date this podcast is going to go up, right? Like if you're a drum tang and the staff, you can't worry about the guys you missed. Um, you know, you've got to talk to those guys that are still out there. And, hey, what can we do to bring you to Manhattan? If you've already been to Manhattan on a visit, okay, what else do you need to see? Is that NIL? Is that a, a promise here? Is that, you know, what do we need to do to get you to commit to Kansas State? So uh, to this point now, they've done a good job. Not great, but they've done good. Uh, NIL is more active, more present, more visible in the basketball space and football. Because um, we know that um, his his asking price is $1.2 million of NIL. I don't the case it wasn't going to do that. I just don't have that budget. I don't think Indiana probably should have done it. Uh, and we saw what Kansas did. Hunter Dickinson was a great player for a million dollars, but it also meant they got other fewer other players and they ran out of players. They, they really struggled with that. So I think K State is doing a good job of uh, understanding its budget, what they can afford, what they uh, need to do. Uh, you know, the a crystal ball announcement was used to against them um it turned out to be completely false and this appears to be the new thing going on is coaches are leaking false information to people and it gets through the coaching community and and it gets posted uh, because you know it's a lock uh coach said this and pass it to my coach uh, look um, it's crystal ball has kind of turned into a chess piece in the recruiting process i guess i don't know but i, I actually like what they're doing um and they're they're putting their hats in early on people coming back and evaluating and the biggest shortcoming we've talked about it many times they had from the nil last year was failing to get that true playmaking point guard an experienced one and they did it the first thing they did is they solved that with mcdaniel they also wanted a shooter an athlete you know honestly someone that replaced cam carter and they did it I'm going to forever be confused by having CJ and RJ Jones on the same team, but uh, I'll have to sort that out of my mind. How, what are the chances? Those post game talks are going to be phenomenal. You're going to have to redo 10 of them. Oh my gosh. You might say they even play for Louisville. Maybe I Google. <laughs> Google's going to start calling RJ Popeye Jones again, like what happened earlier in the year. You yeah, that? I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe we got to come up with a nickname for both of them. So. Oh. So you don't have you know, Google was on to something with that. Yeah, mm. maybe call RJ Pop Tart Popeye. Pop yeah. Tart. <laughs> I almost said Pop Tart Popeye. <laughs> Pop Tart's not a bad nickname. Pop Tart Jones. Because I'm hot and tasty. Uh, <laughs> um, a little bit gooey. Uh, what? I'm gonna give my grade here. Okay, I'll give go a grade. B minus. That's what I'm thinking too. Because if they got a big guy, they're definitely A minus to A. I mean. When you go and you strike quickly and you get a power five guard that averages 16 points a game last season, I mean, what's not to like about yeah. that? At least on paper, at least you have a proven player. And I can't say K-State did that the last two years in the transfer portal. That's I, I want to say that's a first for Jerome Tang, and I think that's a big win. Uh, Coloma was kind of proven. Yeah, but, but how early? Later. But yeah. how early? Yeah, he was. It, what I mean is just immediate yeah. national championship okay. game happens, okay. same week. You got a power five guy who averages 16 points a game. I mean, being able to strike quick, big props to Tang on that one. Um, but but now it kind of gets into that lull of, hey, we missed out on a couple big guys we really wanted. Now what's left, you know, we can be patient. We can sit around, wait, see if anything else happens in the portal. But, um, you know, those main pieces that you really wanted are gone and you kind of got to 
find the value as to what remains. But I think, you know, getting that first one with McDaniel was, was huge. Yeah. Uh, I like what they're doing. I, I, you're right. Yeah. The big is the next piece. You better get that wrapped up. Um, they have five. It looks like um, from what we're seeing, Kaluma will be back. There was a report of that. And you just don't know where these reports are coming. It could be someone yeah. just shooting a report. <laughs> yeah. Shooting. Uh, you but know, we still feel good about it. We, we have like probably 60, 40 in favor of Kaluma coming back. Yeah. So, but I well, will the, say his that- choices with the NBA and, is he ready for the NBA? No, he's not. I, yeah. I can see that he might be at some point, but he's just too inconsistent. Yeah. I will say that K-State staff is doing a good job of using its current roster, and they've done this for years, right? Like Marquise Noel, was a, a, he was a recruiter. He was basically like part of the staff getting guys to come to K-State. You go back to last year. I know Arthur Kaluma talked about how Naquan Tomlin played a part. I think they worked out for the Celtics when they were going through some draft stuff and they got to connect and obviously Tomlin doesn't work out um, with everything that happened with him. But like, you know, Tomlin played a part in getting Arthur Kaluma here. You know, you've got uh, Buddy Rich went to the same high school as CJ, uh, CJ Jones. So they, you know, all these connections that are there, the staff is taking advantage of stuff like that. And so I know people may be upset that Rodney Perry is not getting guys from Link Academy as AAU ties. And I, I get that. That's that's a valid frustration. But you got to remember that Perry was maybe more brought for his X's and O's and his schematics that he can bring to the table. Those connections that he's got on the AAU circuit can can certainly help. But, you know, K-State's using everything to its advantage with the connections and relationship to, relationships that they've had, whether that's a player or a coach, whatever that may be, they're, they're, they're getting their, you know, their players, their players know people. And so if you get somebody that's a friend or, I know that's maybe why Mark Mitchell was initially tied to K-State right with with Taj Manning. You know, these things do matter. And so K-State, to their credit, is using using that to their advantage. Well said, GJ. 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 It gills J. Oh, uh, everything. Is, RJ's right? already taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> last question of the first half from Donnie Cat 97 Welcome. Uh, with three roster spots left, what positions is K-State filling next? Also, does this lean towards Arthur Kaluma staying? Y- yes. Uh, big, big, and uh, not quite as big. I think they're looking at for two posts and a, a power forward. Gills, that about right? Yeah. yeah they're looking with, for bigs. With Kaluma, you know, the, the initial pitch to get him to Manhattan last season – is not going to change, you know, minutes aren't going to be promised, all that stuff. And so I don't think that, you know, you, some people have been concerned with maybe K-State going after uh, the, the players that are maybe like Kaluma, right? I don't think that says one way or another, Oh, Kaluma's staying or Kaluma's gone. You know, he's good. He knows that if he wants to come back, he's going to have to fight and compete for those minutes. But yeah, I think you got to go big, big, big. I mean, maybe if you see some, some wings out there uh, that you like, and that's maybe the, the frustrating part, or if you're a player out there that's available and you want to come to K state, you know, it's, well, there's just not <laughs> K state can't take any more of those players, maybe one more. And I know that you said three, right. But that's assuming that Glover and Gasson and, and Kaluma, all three right. of those guys are back. Right. So if one of those does not, you know, we haven't gotten official word from any of them. So maybe it's four, maybe it's five. It's could be three, but I think the odds of all three of those guys coming back are pretty good right now as, as, from, from our understanding, but we'll see if, if that number grows, but I mean, yeah, you, you just have to assume they're going to hit, uh, hit those, hit those bigs heavy. Cause you, you know, that's, that's what you need on your roster for next year. You need to get some guys that are, you know, I, I would, I would like to bring in a guy like Jerrell Colbert that maybe you have the thoughts of redshirting and developing him with long-term potential. I'm totally okay with that, but you know, give you know one or maybe two guys, but you're going to have to get somebody that's got, I don't want to say power five experience, but, you know, starting experience somewhere who's can, you know, I'm not going to say they have to average a double double or anything like that, but you need somebody, somebody that can come in and start, right? You need right. that from the portal 100%. So take a flyer on a guy or two. Sure. But you need to get some, somebody that can start because you need a starting, unless they have some plans for Gasson to play the five or Taj Manning mm-hmm. to, to really blossom throughout this past off season, you're going to need a guy that is, pretty much like Will McNair to come in. And I know Colbert kind of took over that starting job in the latter half of the season. 
But get a guy like Will McNair who is going to be a starter for maybe one year, and then next next offseason you try to get some of those guys or the guys that you get that are like Colbert, like I mentioned, to, to develop into your system so that maybe next year you can get that. But I think right now maybe the best plan might just be have a, a plug, plug for one year guy and see what you can do. But I know Baba Miller is coming off of a visit. He's got a lot of potential, a lot of upside to him. Could he be capable of starting next year for Kansas State? Sure, yes. And I'm not putting that past him. I think he could do that. But I, I think you're maybe getting a guy like Miller for his long the longevity, what he can do in the in the you know the the potential in him rather than what you saw at Florida State from him, if that makes sense. So we'll see what they do. You got to go at least two, three bigs, depending on on the on the statuses of guys that come back. But you know, who knows? Maybe they go after one more wing, but you're you're gonna assume bigs are what they're after. Yeah, I would love to have a very pure shooter. I mean, CJ Jones is, according to his numbers, an upgrade from Cam <clears throat> shooting the three. I didn't realize Cam fell to almost 30% last year. Uh, how can you not how, believe that? I, I just did, did you watch? <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. That's less, sorry. less than sorry. a third of his shots were makes, and that's awful. Now, uh, RJ's at 37, uh, so that is an improvement. I'll say this, in watching his highlights, he, he's more apt to shoot a deep three than Cam was. Cam was pretty much a my toes on the line type of guy, uh, which, you know, limit your options. But I, I would like to see a guy that, you know, one of those dead eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. Kansas State ran into one from Cincinnati uh, that got hot and hit a huge deep three to win a game. Uh, you kind of need that weapon. Marquise Noel was that in the past. Uh, they didn't really have that. I'd, I'd like to really find someone um, that can absolutely light it up from three. You look at, real quick, before we go to break, um, you look at Doug McDaniel at Michigan, okay? He, I've talked about this on here, he's excited to maybe be a point guard and facilitate for others, right? Because at Michigan, all he was asked to do was score. On the flip side of that, I'm hearing that C.J. Jones is excited to come to Kansas State so that he can score more because at UIC, Jones was asked to, I don't want to say asked to not score, but, you know, I don't know how much the guards, there was a lot of facilitating there. And we saw that on his highlight tape and stuff that he, he's he got good vision. He can facilitate, but Jones is now excited to score more. McDaniel is excited to facilitate more. You know, these guys that, you know, people, you are, you are entering the transfer portal for a reason. Sometimes that's a good reason. Sometimes that's a bad reason. But I think Tang is, is going to let these guys come in and embrace some newer roles in Manhattan when speaking of, of McDaniel and Jones. Very good. That's it for the first half of the PowerCat podcast, this week's edition. We'll be back right after this break as you hear about our sponsor, Fridge Wholesale Liquor. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Please visit the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, located at the corner of Claflin and Westport Road in Manhattan, Kansas. Welcome back to the show. Let's return to the Cats and Dogs studio. Zach, I didn't do the break. I didn't, do the break. I didn't update the break. Make sure you use <laughs> the cymbal and guitar rift bed. Man. Boomer. I, it, I know. I, I'm a mess. I have the memory of, uh, I don't even can't remember what that would be. That just says it all. Welcome back to the Firecat Podcast. We are sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Make sure you check out the fridge whenever you're in town. Oh, my Siri just woke up. Siri, oh, no, really? no, go away, Siri. Siri, go away. Okay. I've got um, it coming from all directions. <laughs> and now it's. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear a single thing. Is we Siri are leaving that in. Yeah, oh, did that not go across? I didn't hear. No. Uh -uh. Oh, that's funny. I'm sure that's on the recording. That is it better. Funny. Be. Oh my God. Well, well, what did Siri say? I'm, I'm in the Siri dark. Siri started. Uh, you need to stop saying that word. Searching. Oh yeah. Oh, she's back. <laughs> He's back. Whatever it is. Uh, started searching for um, stuff about going to the fridge. Wholesale liquor. Oh really? <laughs> in an English oh, well. voice. If it didn't play, that's going to be an awkward. I know. Three seconds of nothing. <sighs> Maybe I'll make her, him, do it again and put it in. I don't know why you changed the gender of your Siri. I like the British one. I it makes you have me, a British woman. I, look, I feel like I have a butler. 
I feel like I have a, see, I don't have a very good relationship with that AI. It's the Amazon one that I'm very close to. She talks to me every day and she plays my favorite music whenever I ask her to. She even turns off lights throughout our house and reminds me to give my dog his pills. She's very special to this family. Yeah. Right, Alexa? Yeah, never mind. I'm sorry. I did not get that. Yeah, no That's doubt. That's what I was just going to say. Okay. <laughs> I did hear that one. I heard that one. that one. They're always listening, folks. I am the ultimate libertarian with spy devices all over my house. <laughs> it's crazy. And TikTok on lock. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. First question of the second half from I Like Pickles Cat. Who is in charge of scheduling and how was it decided that Oregon State was an awesome choice for a home and home? Well, Jill Shields is taking it over. She's, you, know, you may not know this, she's deputy AD. She's number two. Uh, she volunteered to take it off of Gene's plate, um, which Gene was told me he was happy uh, because it's, it's, a pro, it's a pain in the butt. Um, you're, you're, like casting lines, fishing all the time. And to find the right school with the right dates available is a real challenge. So, I mean, Oregon State was a natural one. They're looking for games. Um, Washington State is already on the schedule. I, I'm, I'm all in on, on scheduling those two. Uh, I, I really am. I know some people are worried they're not Power 5, Power 4 anymore. I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not into that. Not I think either. they will be by then. Yeah, uh, in whatever plan that is, I'm not even sure what it'll be. But they, as I said in my DD, they still have an open window. The weirdest one is Washington State is split over four years. It's just they, I can't remember who plays where, but they play in 26 and 29, and then 27 and 28 are open. It just seems like that's something they could have addressed and maybe moved them up because Washington State now has a bunch of available dates. Uh, and I'll be blunt here. I, I'm not, I wouldn't be disappointed if they just booked them for four years. I mean, I know it's weird, but, and you'd prefer to get, you know, more traction out yeah. there, but I mean, if you have to do it. Do you think that Jill Shields visits FBS schedules as much as uh, well, we do? do? I, Trying to find all the dates and I, like, don't know. Oh, I can call up Oregon state. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know, but I'm not mad about this at all. I think that, if this was five years ago and K-State was making a home at home with UCF or Cincinnati or BYU, I don't think anybody's upset with that. And I would put Oregon State and Washington State above those schools yep. today that they would have been five years ago. I mean, just because they lost their their automatic qualifier status, I don't think that that hurts them. I mean, it's not their fault they got left behind from everybody else who wanted to go to the Big Ten and the Big Twelve, um, but you know they're still a legitimate program. They were good last year. They replaced Rutgers. It's great that that game series is Thank gone. Um, you know, I think you mentioned maybe they move that series up. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to want to play Rutgers, but maybe they rearrange that series in the future. Who knows? But uh -huh. but I think a lot of it depends on what what are the conference makeups going to be in the future because we still have the sec with eight games a year we have the big 12 with nine acc with nine big 10 i think nine still a week later we have not double checked this since we talked about it yeah. um but with less conferences available it'd be interesting to see if there's going to be some alliances that actually work out to where we're going to play a non-conference game against one of the other other conferences. Right. Because I think you're going to see some of these power conferences align themselves with each other saying, hey, we're going to play some non-conference non games to get us to 10 power four games or 11 power four games. I think it remains to be seen exactly what the, the schedule is going to look like um, as far as non-conference opponents go. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, I'd hope they're going to find someone Big Ten or SEC. As someone pointed out, uh, what could possibly go wrong with scheduling Oregon State in the future? Um, because what set this in process was Arizona and Colorado joined the conference. So what if Washington State and Oregon State end up joining the conference in the future, you know, in some rendition of the Big 12? Then you're right back in that situation, uh, which is less than ideal. But I hope they 
Um, you know, someone mentioned Notre Dame. I, you're not going to get Notre Dame on the schedule. You're just not. Kansas State doesn't bring enough to the table for them. Now, if you could work out Notre Dame like the ACC relationship, the ACC falls apart, Notre Dame wants to stay in independent, then maybe you pitch to them the same thing. You can park all your other sports here and and arrange to play some teams in, in football. Uh, I don't see that happening, but that's possible. I completely disagree with your Notre Dame take because if you look at their future schedule, they're playing at UCF one year. They're going to play at Purdue, at Pitt. Granted, they have a lot of series like USC and Navy and things that are going to be preserved throughout their their history of playing football, but you look at the rest of their schedule, it doesn't seem that they would be you don't anti-K-State You don't think- other than how good K-State might be, unless you're trying to duck them, but I don't know what you're going at. Purdue, I don't understand. Purdue's just probably a regional in-state type thing. Um, Pitt is an ACC thing, and UCF is a Florida recruiting-based thing. They recruit a lot in Florida, so they probably okay. want to go down there. So um, if there's another Avery Johnson coming up, maybe they'll yeah. try to play K-State. I don't know. I just – I don't think it's necessarily I'd love a it. deal breaker. I'd love it. I would really, really well. I just don't see it's possible. I would love for K State to play a Wisconsin, um, you know, someone like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's so hard to do conference uh, non conference scheduling because you don't know what these teams are going to be like. You get downgraded for playing a bad team in your non conference. Well, how are you supposed to know that when you scheduled them six years in advance, or in this case, four years in advance? I don't know. In 2025, they go to Arkansas. So I I just, it's SEC, but at the same time, K State is probably a better program, at least recently in the Big 12, than what Arkansas has been in the SEC. Oh, I agree with that. I just, I don't think that it's necessarily a deal breaker for K State being who they are and where they happen to reside in the country. So I just, Maybe you don't get them, and maybe that's a hard one to do, but it's one you at least think about. No, I think you try. You try. And they have the one game with Army. I think that'd be a great series. No, it's not Power 5. But if that has some substance, particularly here with the relationship Manhattan and Kansas State has with Fort Riley. Waking me up at night. Love it. Put your big guns away, guys. After 11 p.m., shut it down. They've been doing it here while we're recording. I don't know if you guys hear that in your basement uh, bits, but I've heard it going off. No, Not on my headphones. The, the, whatever they've got, the, the new, new toy they got literally shakes our house. <laughs> and we are we live close to the football stadium. Somebody told me yesterday there's no new toys. They're 15-year-old toys. I find it hard to believe. These I, things are louder than I've ever I heard agree. in my life. I, I should have pressed them a little harder. Uh, next question is from Serial Griller in C. That is a new Cereal user. Serial Griller? Serial Griller. Like cereal, like killer, not like breakfast cereal. That's the same thing. Captain well, this, Crunch this is, is cereal with killer. an S. Serial Killer okay. with an S. Uh, serial Griller in C. Welcome to the podcast. The perception of K State's NIL budget went from one of the lowest in the Big 12 to one of the better ones in the country. I assume this was due to a few big boosters stepping up. And if so, how sustainable is this going to be? Yeah, I mean, it was. That's my question about the NIL, not just for K-State, but for everyone. How sustainable is it to have big boosters paying you millions of dollars every year just to get players? I don't think it's sustainable in any way. And I think that's what eventually will fold this into athletic departments. I mean, I I think the collective will become part of the athletic department across the nation and uh, they'll bring it in house. And that way they can decide in their budget how much NIL every program will have and run it that way. I mean, think about the oddity of this to recruit players. Now you have to deal with someone outside of your program and talk to them about your recruiting and your budget and you know, how you want to divvy up this money and who needs what, you know, returning players, what are they worth? What's the market bear? That's all happening outside of your basketball staff or your athletic staff. And I don't think that's sustainable for a business to do that. So, um, yeah, I think it'll all change here in the near future. I, I think we're going to come to the point where we'll just agree to go pay players. 
I mean, if that becomes the case and you bring the NIL in house, you're not going to be giving out in. It's not going to be NIL anymore. It's going to be here's this W-4 you need to fill out so mm -hmm. we can withhold your taxes. Right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how this isn't already. I mean, calling it NIL is kind of disingenuous when you're giving. Say, we're going to give you a million dollars for what? Well, mm -hmm. we're going to tell you eventually you have to do one little thing and that gets you your million dollars. It's a technicality. So we're not actually paying you as an employee, but here's your money. It's just contrived. It's just so insane right now what, what NIL is. I mean, just rip the Band-Aid off. Make them employees. If this is what the future is going to be, make them, make them employees. Let the players unionize. Let them have a player's union. Let them collectively bargain. Yeah, that's the and, big thing and, the courts want. And make it a fair playing field, so to speak. I mean, I just, if you're losing players due to, you know, X amount of dollars, make a salary cap. Yeah. Let's, let's just go full professional sports Agreed. And, and make it that way. If, if this is what the end outcome is, just rip the bandaid off, get it over with and do it because, and I think you're going to see, it's going to hurt the players probably a little bit. The, the ones on the lower end are going to benefit because they're right. probably not making a lot of money right now. Well, but if the, you average it out to 50000 a year for everybody, you know, at least it gives everybody a starting playing field and then they can have their own NIL on top of that if that's yeah. what they want. It, it, it make NIL what it was meant to be. Exactly. The additional the money problem. and selling... Like, Caitlin Clark, you know, those top however many draft picks from the WNBA this last week... Um, those are marketable personalities. They have real NIL value. She sure does. Um, they're making millions of dollars a year because of who they are and not because they play for Iowa or Stanford or UConn. They, they've earned that NIL. Avery Johnson has earned his NIL, does car commercials, does whatever else. I'm sure there's some stuff locally that is going into the collective that is probably going to Avery Johnson that may not go to Avery Johnson if they made players employees. But, you know, the NIL right now, as it is, it's not really a level playing field. You're oh. playing the players you want to play. You, you're, pl you're paying the players you want to pay. Right. Whew. You're paying the players you want to pay. And the ones that just want to play college football and go get an education that – you know, are going to go get a job in something other than sports, you know, they're happy to be here. Yeah. But eventually, the guys at the top are probably going to take somewhat of a pay cut from the quote unquote NIL as it stands today. And that money is going to go to the rest of the roster. And you're going to have to manage a salary cap. And, and, you know, you'll probably have 85 guys. I don't know how this affects walk ons. I mean, there's so many things that you can open with this can of worms as far as what college sports has been its purpose for a person's life um, giving someone an education for free um, giving them that life experience of being in college i mean it's just it's sad what it's become but at the same time it's evolved right. it is something else and you have to accept that it's something else right now and it, i think that we've reached the point where just give them the W-4s and make them employees. I, I agree. I mean, I've come so far on this. I was a big fan of the NIL. The ability to profit from your identity seemed very core and basic to what this nation's about. And the NCAA was preventing that. But now this is just straight up payments and buying players. It's above the table what was once cheating. Yeah. And it's it's uncomfortable. And it's grown, and it's only going to continue to grow. It's only going to get, I mean, as you mentioned, K-State caught up in the NIL space a little bit. Well, those other schools that have huge donors are going to realize that, and the gap will open back up, and it'll be up to little old K-State to try to close that gap. It's going to be a mess for a long time. I'll say this. Uh, right now, K-State's basketball NIL is in the approximate space, and you understand that players aren't paid equally. They're played, paid on value or worth or, you know, uh, what they bring to the table for the program. But on average, K-State basketball players are making two hundred dollars to $250,000 a year. We'll get into some numbers here. It's crazy. We move on. Yeah. Okay. Yells, do you have any input? 
before we i'm in i think you said it best zach okay yeah next question is from contra cat do you believe k-state has a top 15 nil what is that in dollars and what is that level in april of 2025 see um there's different budgets i mean football and basketball have different nil budgets there isn't like one athletic department budget again this isn't up to the athletic department uh, i don't know what football is i know uh, approximately what basketball is and i do think that might be top 20 top 25 i don't cover other schools folks and people don't release their nil numbers because they don't want it out they don't want a player knowing how much their nil budget is uh, because then they'll want more of it everyone's protecting their nil total uh football i would say no nowhere close i mean just the reality of of how much money it takes to fill a football roster as opposed to basketball or volleyball or soccer but thank you dude there dudes in, dudes in the podcast now i think they want to go out they've been bugging me mm. or the sprinkler guys here and they want to go bark at them neither <laughs> way it's gonna work. It. <laughs> but yeah I, we don't know where they rank overall but I do want to give a shout out to Curry Sexton and all of his folks at Wildcat NIL. They have really stepped it up. They're getting very creative in how they go about this. Uh, and I like their grassroots efforts. And it may not bring them a great chunk of money, but it'll bring them some steady foundational money that they know is coming in every month. Yeah. They had a nice video. It was like 20 minutes long. If you didn't watch it or listen to it, it's on everything platform out there it was it was yeah. Hennington and Pearson and Curry like but they're doing this because they love K-State right like they're not mm -hmm. they're not in this I'm, I'm obviously the money's great that they're getting but like they're they're not in it for the money right they're they love K-State I know Hennington talked about how, like he thought that Chris Kleiman's program was awesome everything about it was great he loved his time at K-State but NIL you know walk-ons like Pierce you know so getting I mean they're just in it for the love of Kansas State, and that's why I think this has been so successful over the last, you know, month or two. Yep, three really wonderful homegrown dudes, and they're they're above the board. Uh, one thing I don't worry about with Wildcat NIL, based on those three guys, they're not doing anything shady. It's right, one hundred percent how it's supposed to be done. Um, I, I bet not many schools can say they have an attorney running their nil and that's what curry is yeah he did some work in the sports space and now has decided to do this full time and i i think it's wonderful yeah i think i don't know if casey has a 10 million dollar nil budget i, don't I would doubt that they have 10 million dollars at their disposal at least right now not in football, no. maybe in 2025 they get to that that level i just don't know where but also money's gonna come from but also if I had to guess, I would say every SEC program outside of Vanderbilt has more than $10 million available at their disposal for football alone. Yeah. So I think that probably paints a picture of what the gap is. That's just basically, gonna be reality. I mean, basically, go go down the, the list of Power Four schools right now. Are they considered bigger and better than K State? Yes. Then they probably have a bigger NIL budget than you do. That's yeah. just the fact of life. Oregon, UC, UC, USC, UCLA, Washington, all four of them, bigger NIL budget. You look at Michigan, Ohio State, you know, we can name all these. He, he wants <laughs> dude, to go dude, outside. I've got to get out. Uh, so, you know, you go all across college sports and look at the programs and donor bases and K-State lacks, unfortunately. I mean, it's just, it's the reality. It's probably a little bit of the same thing of, you know, during realignment where it felt like K-State was going to be left out. This is kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have the resources. You don't have the the donor base necessarily, the money. Um, you know, I would be curious to know how many schools have donors that kind of treat their school like a, you know, a pet project of I'm just going to dump money into this because I love it. doesn't matter what it is. How many of those types of schools are being floated by one or two donors? Yep um miami yeah mm -hmm. places like miami you know that shouldn't have anywhere near as much nil for the size of institution that they are but they get it so it's k-state's always going to be kind of at that disadvantage until the donor base grows a little bit what do we have one more question we got one more question okay i'm just going to look into the camera and say this 
K-Staters, we need you to invent something of huge profit, like time travel. That's all. A little time travel. Uh, license out the... So I, look, just someone become Bill Gates or Elon Musk. That's all I want. Can you guys get busy? I'm doing what I can. This is not, as it turns out, as profitable as I thought it would be 26 years ago. But I'm doing what I can. Of course, we can't give to NIL and stuff. But Just start telling it. everybody to buy lottery tickets and somebody will hit it big, right? I know. You'll be well, good to go. Yeah. I don't know how long it's been since Kansas in, as a state has had a lottery winner. It seems like it's, it's like never 12 Kansas. years or something. It's been a while. Okay. Okay. Let's get to the last question last because question. dude's going to poop in the studio and none of us want that. <laughs> last question. I the podcast from, o, from O2 Cat. Should the Big 12 Conference create an NIL collective for equal distribution across the no. conference? Uh -uh. No, it's not fair. If you've got the donors and the resources, you should benefit from it. Yeah. You don't and want to turn you, into the NFL. And yeah. And even if that works against Kansas State, I, I get that. Now, if it comes in house, I think it would behoove the NCAA or whatever the institution is to offer some kind of guardrails. He's gone. He's he's not happy. Uh, that you know doesn't allow like Ohio State to have a fifty million dollar football nil. You know, I mean, be nice, uh, but again. Money doesn't solve all your problems. It can create a lot of problems. It can give you issues because you have locker room strife and this player, you know, has already got his money. Why does he need to do all this work? You got to play me or this booster will be pissed off. It can cause a lot of problems too. And I think we've seen that in college athletics a little bit. I think K-State might benefit from having a conference-wide NIL. Oh, it if, it, if it's if it's only like if there's no separate collectives, if all collective, I mean, if the NIL is just going to be hands, handled by the conference itself, I think K-State benefits. Right. But I think that less people give to NIL if you know it's not necessarily going to your got institution. It. I'm not going to give $14 a year or a month or whatever if I know that only one of those dollars is going to the school that I support. So I, I don't think it works in that sense unless this question comes with a different idea. I, you know, I, I just, I don't know why the big 12 would need their own collective. If other schools are going to have their collective too. I'm going to, I think the I next know. evolution for college sports as a whole conferences share their conference revenue, TV, you know, bowl tournament, all that revenue is shared across the board. Uh, and that's how conferences are built. Now, of course, Texas didn't like that. They wanted to have their own, some of their media rights, and that caused some problems. But I think what we're seeing in the ACC might be an indication of at some point, conferences are going to have to say, okay, schools, this is your base of what you're going to get. And everything else is going to go into uh, a fund that's driven by TV ratings and on field success or on court success. And it won't be equal distribution. And that will be be driven by the Ohio States and Michigans and, you know, those schools, USC, that's like, why are we paying Purdue the same amount of money? And they're not, well, they just won a national championship in basketball. That's a horrible example. But, you know, Minnesota or someone, Northwestern, Indiana, which apparently has plenty of money in their basketball collective. Uh, but someone's going to push back and say, we're done sharing. I mean, the greed is out of control and it's going to look for new targets. And and that, that'll be the next target, unequal revenue sharing within conferences. Gills, any thoughts? No, I agree with what you said. I yeah. just hope you guys can not have to uh, have dude do some damage in the studio. So I'm praying for y'all. Yep. We're gonna, okay. We're, I think we're going to wrap it up because, uh, yeah, Zach's going to pet dude to distract him while we put a wrap on the show. Um, we appreciate you watching or listening to the uh, PowerCat podcast. Why did that just Where did the music go? Out? No. I don't know. You guys. tried. I don't know. Oh, you know what? Because I stopped it before. I just played the last part of the bed. <laughs> I suck at this. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week with another edition of the PowerCat podcast. Hopefully soon we'll have another recruiting podcast from Ryan Wallace and Cole Carmody covering football recruiting behind the paywall for our subscribers only make sure you consider 
subscribing to GoPowerCat, 60% off right now across the 24-7 Sports Network. Thanks for watching. This has been a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Please support this show by subscribing to this YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite podcast platform.